Hey, so um, recently um, a lot of my friends and people I know on the internet have been making videos about this sort of um, internal debate that they've been having, which is whether they should make videos that are kind of um, more polished and professional looking and maybe a little bit more performative, um, but that they think will kind of appeal to a broader audience and grow their channels and make them, if not famous, then at least will kind of um, get their name and their face out there and raise their profile a little bit. Um, or, on the other hand, to make videos that maybe um, are less um, beautiful looking and maybe um, are a little bit less marketable to a broader audience, but which uh, are going to be really um, fun and rewarding to them and also to kind of um, the core audience of people who watch their videos regularly and um, comment and interact with them and who genuinely care about who these YouTubers are as people. So, um, yeah, a lot of my friends have been talking about this recently. Um, Rose made a video a while back about sort of um, performativity um, as a YouTuber um, on her videos. Um, Mark made a video about um, sort of not getting big on YouTube after sort of dreaming about that and how that feels. Teo made a video on a similar topic. Um, and recently, actually, um, Hank Green uh, did a, kind of a Twitter uh, thread where he came down on the side of um, making videos for fun and maybe not uh, trying to get famous um, as, as sort of the better uh, way to go. So I wanted to weigh in with my own story um, of how I got started on YouTube. I got started uh, making YouTube videos back in 2011, actually, when I was 16 years old, um, because I was a fan of a lot of, of YouTubers, a lot of vloggers and sketch comedians and, you know, the folks who were on YouTube at that point. Um, but uh, there was a period from about 2013 through about 2017, you know, the years when I was in college, when I didn't upload any videos to YouTube at all. And, you know, there were a lot of reasons for that. I, I was in college, um, and so there was a lot of work to do, and I had a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety. Um, but I think one of the main reasons why I wasn't uploading any videos to YouTube is because um, I had kind of convinced myself that in order for my videos to be worthwhile, they had to be appealing to this kind of broad audience. They had to be polished. Um, I had to sort of be performing for the camera as like an actor or a presenter um, in, in a very sort of scripted way. Um, and I had to, you know, get all the edits perfect and everything. Um, and that just felt like a lot of work. It felt like this big hump to get over and it didn't feel like it would be fun. And so, you know, YouTube became this thing that I kind of wanted to do at some point, but was an easy thing to brush aside because it just seemed kind of too hard um, and too stressful uh, of a thing to do. Um, and it wasn't until um, 2017, after I was done with college, when I kind of wanted to start making YouTube videos again, and I actually did start uh, making videos again because I gave myself permission um, to make videos that weren't very good, or at least, like, weren't super polished and super heavily edited. I could do one-take videos like this one, and I did. I started, um, by doing some video responses. Uh, I did some songs with my ukulele. Um, just sort of fun, quick videos. Um, and I decided I was gonna make videos that didn't have to be, like, amazing. And also, I was going to make videos that I didn't care if anybody watched, you know. Um, and I think a couple things happened that I wasn't expecting um, after I started making these sort of just silly videos um, uh, for the heck of it. Um, one is, you know, um, when I originally started making videos, I was making, like, polished, like, comedy sketches and, like, musical parodies and, and you know, heavily edited scripted vlogs um, and um, kind of was dreaming um, that I would, 
get famous, um, or if not famous, at least, as I've said before, um, uh, high profile enough uh, to be noticed by people like Charlie McDonnell or the Vlog Brothers, you know, who I thought were cool. Um, that was kind of my my goal, um, was to sort of get enough views um, to be noticed by these higher profile YouTubers who I admired. Um, but um, what happened when I started making YouTube videos um, was that um, people did start noticing my videos, not in huge numbers, but like this committed group of, you know, a few people, um, of several people who were leaving comments regularly and um, many of whom were making videos of their own. Um, and this just group of people who were engaged um, and excited about what I had to say, and it was just so um, gratifying, and it, and it, it, you know, it was so exciting because I had these internet friends for the first time. I never had sort of non-IRL, um, you know, real life friends before, so that was cool. Um, and it was this sort of um, connected feeling um, that. I didn't expect to have um, from making videos. The second thing that happened when I started uploading videos again last year was um, I started having more ideas for videos um, and I started wanting to make videos more often, which is awesome. Um, but uh, it also meant <laughs> that I started wanting to make videos that were more complicated. Um, and that were not as quick and and silly, um, and you know, I also kind of you know as I started getting marginally better at making videos, um, I kind of started wanting more people to see them, and I kind of wanted to grow my channel. Um, uh, you know, the number of subscribers that I was getting, um, and to to have videos that if not went viral, that kind of um, went beyond my normal um, set of subscribers and, you know, slash family and friends who um, like the videos that I make. Um, but this feels a little weird to me um, because... So, okay, I uh, intentionally um, uploaded my um, Ballad of Emery Harrow <laughs> video um, back in September. Um, and then immediately followed, well not immediately because this took a long time to make, but followed that um, by my Are You Gustav Mahler um, educational <laughs> quiz video. And I did that intentionally because the first video um, I, that I, you know, did in that little series, the Emery Harrow video, um, was this, this little song um, that I did based on Teo's, you know, um, alternate reality game that, like, you know, a few of my my viewers um, played because they also watch his videos, um, and the people who played that and who understood the the references I was making in my little song um, loved that video. Like, they were super into it, um, and I was I I was gl I was really glad they enjoyed it, um, and then the. Mahler video is a different story. You know, it is this video that took me a month <laughs> to edit um, and put together, um, and it's this educational video, you know, um, very um, sort of scripted, had a lot of music inlaid, so it kind of looked, you know, a little bit, <laughs> not, not beautiful, but at least a little bit more sort of professionally done, um, and that while very quirky and, you know, idiosyncratic and kind of weird, um, at least was something that could kind of be understood um, by a broader audience as like a genre of video that, 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 that existed, you know. Um, it wasn't just sort of weird <laughs> um, fan fiction based on something um, that my friend made. It was like an educational video. Um, it, you know, that's a thing that people know what it is, and, and so it's a little bit more approachable to people who maybe haven't seen my videos before. Um, so, um, I hope, um, this doesn't alarm you, but, like, a lot of my ideas for future videos 
are more along that line, like educational videos um, that are maybe a little bit more scripted. Like um, I am working on a video in the pipeline about um, uh, Thornton Wilder's play Our Town, um, uh, which is going to sort of be like um, a little bit like the um, Romeo and Juliet video that I did back during Vita. Um, this sort of uh, literary analysis slash argument making um, type of video. Um, I am working on um, a, an educational video about World War I, um, which I'm going to try to um, upload this weekend, we'll see, um, but in honor of sort of the 100th anniversary of World War I ending um, on November 11th, um, 2018. Uh, and this is kind of way, um, you know, in the in the distant future, but I kind of want to do a podcast about folk music and share that with my YouTube audience, and I kind of uh, maybe eventually want to make an alternate reality game where um, Studs Terkel and Ida B. Wells come back to life and uh, start uh, telling you the history of Chicago. Um, so... Um, obviously more complex, like, performative ideas, um, which is exciting to me, um, but it worries me for a couple of reasons. One, because um, I think those videos will be harder to make and will take me a long time and kind of um, go against uh, why I um, first, you know, started uh, making videos again, which was to have a creative outlet that was a little easier and a little bit lower stress. And second, because I think those easier, lower stress videos are what actually kind of got a lot of my really um, committed uh, viewers who are kind of my, my closest friends on YouTube um, into my videos in the first place. Like, I kind of worried that some of the people who um, were really wild about my Emery Harrow video um, or maybe really love the videos that I make that are about me and like my sexuality or whatever um, saw the Mahler video and were like, what the heck is this? Like, <laughs> why is he trying to teach me something? Um, <laughs> why, why, you know, why don't we have a more personal conversation? Um, so... Yeah, that's where I'm at uh, with my YouTube video making. And then in terms of like um, whether I want to grow my audience, like the answer to that question for so long was always like, heck yes. Um, I don't know if I want to be super famous, but like um, I, you know, I would like to have, you know, a couple thousand subscribers to kind of grow my channel um, because I am proud of the stuff that I make. I do watch my own videos because they're the type of thing that I like to see in the world and I would love for more people to see those things and I want to make videos that appeal to a lot more people. Um, but, like, you know, um, I have recently um, actually had an experience of what it is like um, to at least work for an organization that has a lot of uh, sort of fame and a lot of clout. I am currently interning for WBEZ and I actually had the experience of interacting with someone I admired, which was kind of like this end goal that I had um, for like when I got big on YouTube, but I kind of managed to get around that because I worked for this radio station and I managed to book an interview on the show I work on with Hank Green um, about an absolutely re remarkable thing. Um, and I thought like, whoa, this is really big and exciting and cool. And it was. It was an awesome opportunity to produce um, this interview. I wasn't doing the interviewing, but I, like, helped write the questions, and I wrote this, you know, the script for the intro and everything, and I read the book and based my questions off of that, obviously. Um, so it was this great experience of getting to read this advanced copy and, and to, like, you know, book someone on the show that I really cared a lot about and talk to Hank Green on the phone. Um, that was kind of neat. 
but at the same time, um, you know, actually, like, sort of achieving my dream of, like, catching, capturing the attention for a, a moment of someone I admired, this, like, uh, goal I had, <laughs> um, for, for, uh, after I was gonna be big on YouTube, and that I somehow managed to get to, even though I'm not big on YouTube, um, there was a downside to it, um, which is that I was super anxious about this interview. Um, I, you know, some, you know, usually with the radio interviews that I produce, um, there's a lot of them, and so, you know, if something goes wrong on one, or if, you know, I make a few mistakes here and there, um, I'm cool with it. I can learn from them and move on. But, like, with this particular radio segment that I produced, I fretted over the really little details. Um, even though it was taped and we could edit any mistakes out. But, like, the big thing that I kind of messed up um, when I was producing the Hank Green interview was I gave him this clip, uh, or this segment to read from his book, this little, you know, couple of pages um, to read on, on our show, um, because that's what you do when someone writes a book. So I, I picked out this passage and I told him, you know, what page it was on um, and what to read, and the passage turned out to be way too long and um, to have the F word in it, <laughs> um, which we weren't live on the air, luckily, we were taping that segment. Um, so we could edit this, the, the, the passage down and we could bleep out the F word. Um, it was no big deal, but it felt like a really big deal to me, um, at the time, because Hank, Hank noticed, um, that he was reading the F word, and he was like, can I, can I swear? Like, who picked out this passage? And, um, you know, I should have just kind of laughed at that, but I was like, <sighs> hyperventilating because I was thinking like, oh my god, Hank Green is judging me. Uh, I made a mistake in front of my <laughs> of my YouTube idol. Um, and so I felt all this pressure um, of doing, you know, from doing this kind of higher profile thing um, that made it feel not fun. In a way, uh, that's very different from making these YouTube videos, which do feel fun, and the interaction that I get to have with people who are not famous, but that I really like um, and trust. Um, you know, that feels fun to me, with, you know, um, in a way that's less complicated than the fun of producing uh, a radio interview with Hank Green, where it's like, um, you know, uh, I, I sweat the small stuff because I want to look perfect in front of, in front of someone famous, um, who I admire. So, what was I, what was my point of that? Um, I wanted to get, I wanted to get big on YouTube because I wanted, uh, recognition from people who I think are cool, um, who are kind of more powerful than me. I got a taste of that recently, and um, I'm not sure that I uncomplicatedly desire that as much anymore. Not because of anything that Hank Green uh, did. I mean, he seems like a perfectly lovely person who I think I'm sure I would like if I got to know in person, but just because of the situation, um, of the admiring uh, of the sort of power imbalance that I don't feel as much um, with folks uh, who watch my videos regularly. So, do I want to get big on YouTube? Uh, I'm a little bit more ambivalent about that. But I kind of do still want to grow my channel a little bit by, um, you know, uh, 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 not by leaps and bounds, but little by little. I have 40 subscribers now, maybe we can get that to 50 um, by the end of the year. Uh, that's kind of an arbitrary goal, but, you know, if you like the videos that I make, why not share them with your friends? Um, why not uh, tell people who you think might like my stuff about me? Um, uh, I would be really grateful for that, um, but obviously not, not a requirement um, <laughs> for watching my videos.
but uh, yeah, so I'd love to hear your thoughts about the sort of make polished performative videos and get big, or sort of use YouTube as a more um, social platform with people who um, you um, watch their videos and you care about. And um, I want to continue this discussion, not just in the comments, but also on a live stream. Um, my next live stream is, I'm, I'm hoping to do it before I go home for Thanksgiving, and it's going to be like uh, the state of YouTube. That's like, like the state of the union, but the state of YouTube. Um, we'll talk about things that we're excited about on YouTube on the, and on the internet. Um, and I'm going to have a special guest star um, along with me on the live stream who is to be announced. So um, vote down in the in the doobly doo um, of where uh, of the, the times that uh, are best for you uh, to 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 participate in this fun live stream that we're gonna have. Okay, uh, that was a nice a nice little one take video. Um, thank you for sitting through that, and I can't wait to chat with all y'all wonderful non famous people. <laughs> See ya. Oh, haha. Ha. P.S. Um, you know that passage that I gave Hank Green to read from his book that had the F word in it then that I was embarrassed about giving him? Um, it ended up being the exact same passage he read on tour, and to this day I'm not sure if I inspired him to read that passage or not. Um, I guess I'll never know, but uh, like maybe I shouldn't have been embarrassed about it after all. <laughs>